start off by saying I think that uh, well, we certainly believe that uranium is a is a bull market around the corner. That's not the reality right now. In fact, the the commodity is uh, probably down around 20 percent or so this year alone. But I'm going to just spend a minute before getting into the project and hopefully plant a, a seed or two as to you know some of the the things that we think are really going to impact the the commodity in the probably the very near future. So. I mean, there, the, the nuclear reactor business is a growth industry. This is a map uh, showing a lot of the, the countries where reactors are being built. Um, the big story, and one that affects uh, fission quite a bit, is the growth story in China. So uh, you can see right there, there's, there's a number of other countries in there. Uh, China, India is growth, Middle East, but China is important and probably uh, partly they're the biggest growth story, but they've also made a significant investment in fission uranium. Now, if you take a look at this picture, this is uh, out of my hotel room in, in Beijing, and I think that this one picture really sort of sets the key as to what's happening in China. Look at the growth. There's buildings, there's cranes everywhere, and this is the middle of the day. You can barely see a, a block or two down the road. That's the sun shining up there. It's not a night, evening dust shot. This is, this is the middle of the daytime. So, China right now, over the next 15 to, say, 20 years, you'll see a tenfold growth in, in number of reactors. There's just under, uh, under 30 reactors right now in the country. They aim to get over 230 reactors. That has a huge impact on the, on the world consumption of, of uranium. Right now, the United States is the world's biggest fleet of reactors with just over 100 reactors. So think of what China in the next, say, 15 to 20 years on their growth. Um, this is a picture. We did a, a site tour um, in uh, just outside of Hong Kong in the Daya Bay nuclear facility. CGN uh, earlier this year put an $83 million investment into fission. That got them a 19.9% stake of the company, and they were kind enough to take us on a tour of their nuclear facility. So you go from the, the air that you saw in the last uh, picture to what you're seeing here, clean air, that's really what, what's happening. So um, now when uh, CGN, say, or, or you as an investor is out looking for projects, these are some of the, the keys that I think you want to keep in mind. Uh, large, high-grade deposits are very important, obviously, in our business. And shallow, um, this is one of the earmarks of our PLS discovery, is it's, it's a large, high-grade, and very shallow. There's no other deposit in the uranium sector that's this kind of grade that's this size and this close to, to surface. All three of those uh, aspects make this a pretty attractive project. Uh, we have done a, a PEA, a preliminary economic assessment that we filed last September. Um, and jurisdictionally, uh, the project is located in Saskatchewan, which uh, I think by most people's measurement is probably the most attractive jurisdiction of all uh, worldwide for, for the uranium sector. Um, this just shows you what's unique about Saskatchewan and the Athabasca Basin. It's the graded deposits are in the order of 10 to 20 times higher than the, the average graded deposits around the world. Our PLS project is, is pretty much uh, in, in line with that. So they're on the order of 1 to 2 to several percent U308. Um, this is a map showing the Athabasca Basin, and it does show the, a number of the other deposits in there. The PLS project is in your lower left-hand corner. I think the key here is the footprint of this deposit is actually larger than any other uh, mineralized trend in the Athabasca Basin. So uh, we've still got a lot of drilling, obviously, ahead of us, but we already have outlined a footprint of 2.58 kilometers that shows uh, high-grade mineralization on either end and lots of growth in the middle. This map shows a depth uh, of, of these deposits. And I think the key takeaway here is that the, the fission uh, PLS project is very shallow. It starts at 50 meters below the surface. The key is these gray blocks are mines that were shallow but have already been mined out. And the, the, the tick, the, I think the, the takeaway here is that the low-hanging fruit always gets picked first. And this is true of any deposit, any commodity. The shallower deposits tend to go first because they're, as long as the grades are to support the, the project, they tend to be the most viable. The deeper projects wait for higher commodity prices, uh, this sort of thing. Um, this is again a close-up of the Athabasca Basin. Our project is located near the Alberta border. 
Uh, it's just on the outside of the Athabasca Basin itself, um, and it's the, the Triple R deposit is located in there. There's a highway that runs up through the middle. This road was put in by the government to access the Clough Lake mine uh, another 80 kilometers to the north, so you do have some major parts of the infrastructure already in place. And this is an aerial shot showing the, the, the project. So the, we, the PEA that I mentioned, the, so the resource estimate and the economic uh, study that backs this is done in the, the two zones, the 00 East zone and the 780 East. Since that time, we've actually discovered three new lenses of high-grade mineralization that have not yet made it into the resource estimate, and they, they will. We think it'll have a, uh, an impact not only in building the, the pounds on the resource, but we think it'll also positively impact the, the economics as well because it, it just uh, it allows us to, to mine on ground first as long as we can get the resource up there and the economics to back it. The new 600 west zone and the 840 discovered this winter would be your first areas mined. Uh, so this will give you an appreciation for how many drill holes support this, this project right now. As I mentioned, the 00 and the 780 are the two zones of which the resource estimate is done and the economics. So you're starting to, you can see there's a lot of drill holes, and this is important in these types of deposits. They're high grade, but that, uh, they need a lot of drill holes to give you the confidence and definition. Um, we've got over 300 holes into the, into the main zone itself, and that, that gives us a, an indicated resource category, uh, over 80% of the resources in indicated cat, uh, category. That allows you to do economic studies on it. So we're just doing a bit of a turnaround. The new discoveries are the 840 West, the 600 West, uh, and recently this winter too, the 1620. All very impressive. Uh, and we've got a, the PEA study done on it, so this will show you. It's an open pit uh, concept right now. There's the pit margin, and it's a, what we, they refer to as a hybrid mine. So 75% of the resource is done by an open pit, and then you've got an underground mine that, that, that kicks into effect about another seven years after the open pit uh, operations begin. So it's a hybrid, goes open pit, moves on to uh, to uh, underground scenario. I won't get into the detail, I don't think we have the time for it, but as I said, the, the PEA itself, I think the, the takeaway here is that what it looks like is that the triple R deposit has the potential to be one of the lowest cost producers in the world, and that's because it's high grade, near surface, so the, the first ore that you're mining as you develop is your highest grade ore, and it, uh, that high grade zone actually averages around 20% U308, which is absolutely phenomenal by, by any measures. Um, we could talk more in detail. We've got a booth set up at the back, so I'm happy to, um, happy to discuss that. Uh, later on, come by the booth. We can look at all the numbers. So just looking at the project as a whole, um, you know, we, we do have an impressive deposit in the triple R, but it's a very small part of the overall project. So we've got 31,000 hectares of prospective ground. What you're looking at here are these uh, EM conductors that we use geophysics extensively to explore for deposits in this environment. Uh, there's no outcropping, so there's nothing you can find on surface. You need geophysics. It's like, I guess, testing in deeper oil basin. So you... Um, we need to understand the geophysics of setting, and then we will put drill holes down. So the, the triple R deposit occurs on one of these EM conductors. We have over 105 discrete conductors on the property. That translates into around two to 300 kilometers of prospective trend where you potentially can develop these deposits. They do occur in clusters. You, they're structural deposits. They occur on trends in multiple uh, frequencies, you might have a deposit every two or three kilometers on a very prospective trend. We're looking for parallel structures as well, so we call the Forest Lake uh, trend in the middle of the property. Um, those red dots represent holes that we put in, exploration holes that so far look very attractive to us, ones that we'll follow up on. You'll see us drilling these this summer, um, and we're also going to be uh, expanding our resource, well hopefully turn it into a resource on the new discoveries of high-grade mineralization on the, on the, the, the trend beside the, uh, the deposit as well. So um, just to highlight what the summer program's all about, we haven't announced it yet, but the concept is basically to be 
uh, turning the drills around July 1st. And as Eric mentioned earlier in his talk, uh, we believe in, we'll put out results all the way along. You'll see a number of news releases uh, from us. We announce radioactivity. We announce assays as we go along. We'll probably drill around 40 to 50 holes this summer, and you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of news flow. We're pretty continuous almost year-round in, in news flow. Um, some some uh, corporate information there. Uh, cash in the Treasury is around $75 million, so we're good, and that's uh, due to a large extent by the, the investment by CGN earlier this year, and we're covered by eight or nine uh, analysts as well. So very well covered stock. Um, come by the booth and, and meet myself, Rich, and I believe Anna's here as well. So uh, please come by. We're happy to talk and, and give you some more information on the project. Thank you very much. Thank you.